All right. Thank you so much, Rohit. And thank you so much, guys, for joining in today. Uh, today, we will be covering the UiPath Insights upgrade uh, session. And uh, this will be a session which will have uh, some theoretical part where I'll be going over what UI, UiPath Insights is and what it can be used for. And like over the years, we have had multiple versions of uh, UiPath Insights. So we'll also be discussing how, how we can upgrade our version to the latest version that we have, because as we proceed, uh, we always have latest versions coming in with latest bug fixes or new features that you can look for uh, that will be helpful for you. So with that, let me just share my screen and let's get started. All right, uh, let me just, yep, yep. So my name is Arun Kumar and I am a technical account manager working with UiPath. And with me, I have uh, Sagar, who is also a technical account manager. Both of us will be walking through the UiPath Insights upgrade and the key features, as well as the considerations that you have to make sure while you're upgrading Insights. We'll also be giving you a brief of uh, what Insights is and, uh, you know, uh, uh, what all things that you can consider and why you should use it. And this is our uh, LinkedIn profile. If you want to connect with us, you can. Okay, uh, so this uh, session will be considering of two parts. I will be covering the theoretical aspect of it, uh, letting you know uh, the versions, multi-version path upgrades that we have. And uh, Sagar at the end of it will be covering the uh, live demonstration uh, where he'll be uh, showing on the machines how you are going to upgrade UiPath Insights. Okay, so um, as we go ahead, uh, uh, I will request you guys to scan this code on your mobile phones or your, on your devices because uh, throughout the sessions, you can ask your questions uh, on the Slido and uh, we will try to answer it, it best to our uh, knowledge as the session goes on. If uh, I'm taking the Sagar will be able to answer. So we'll just make sure that uh, the questions are answered. And also uh, in between the session, we will be, we'll try to have a small quiz for you guys. So uh, uh, yeah, just keep, uh, just take some time to uh, scan this code and uh, uh, yeah, just keep an eye on it. I'll just keep this on the screen for a few seconds so that uh, you guys are able to scan it. Okay, I think we can go ahead. Uh, like Rohit mentioned, this is our second event in the series. Last week, we had a session of UiPath Orchestrator Upgrade with both infrastructure as a service and uh, platform as a service. Um, today, we'll be covering UiPath Insights Upgrade from 2022.4 to 2023.4. And uh, as you can see, we'll be having upcoming session over the next couple of weeks. So just... Uh, Keep an eye on the same and uh, keep following uh, for the next sessions. Uh, as we move ahead, this is going to be our agenda for the session. Uh, we uh, will be covering what Insights is and why Insights is used uh, in, in, in the uh, platform and what is the significance of uh, using it with all our processes and the data models that we have. We will also like to have an historical insights version comparison because uh, there has been a lot of change in the architecture and the, uh, the background of technology on which insights used to uh, work and uh, how it has evolved. Um, after that, since our session is about upgrading, so we will 
have to ensure certain upgrade con considerations and prerequisites such as hardware and software. So these will be the things that we'll be discussing. And as I mentioned at the end of it, we will be having a live demonstration of uh, upgrade of insights. And we'll ensure that uh, how you can see the upgrade is successful. So what are the checks that you can perform and everything. And yeah, throughout the session, we'll be having questions and answers that you can keep on asking. All right, so um, let's get started with the insights overview. Uh, now, what is insights? I mean, uh, we, we are discussing about the upgrade and uh, we, we have in, in UiPath, we have orchestrator running all the jobs and uh, robots running all the processes. So in between everything that is running, it's very important that you know, it, running a bot is one thing. You're able to just uh, run a process, complete the process. But when it comes to, uh, you know, bigger enterprises or anything, if you are running a lot of processes, if you are not able to visualize and measure what you are running, it can, uh, you know, you'll not be able to know because anything that you're not able to measure, you're not able to use it uh, for the better use, right? So, UiPath Insights is our uh, embedded tool that uh, will help you measure, report, and align all, all your RP operations. So it coincides with the business outcomes as well. You are able to uh, visualize how many uh, robot processes are running successfully, how many are failing, or uh, what are the different exceptions maybe you, you are running across, or what kind of uh, business benefits you are able to get out of it. Um, for example, ROI, how many full-time employees uh, you are able to save by running a lot of your processes. So it's, it gives you a centralized view and uh, of all the data that is flowing through orchestrator robots. And it helps you visualize these in the form of dashboards and uh, business ROIs what are your return on investments on and this you can visualize in the form of dashboards so as i mentioned you can measure your uh, rpa deployment through it you can optimize your rpa processes once you are able to measure you can if if there are some tweaks or uh, 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 anal more analysis is required for your rpa processes you can see which process is taking more time which process uh, is able to uh, basically generate, uh, uh, you know, more cost savings are there. And based on that, uh, if uh, you can scale your RPA implementation, because you will have trackable and shareable reports that you can share with the audiences, with the, with different LOBs and businesses, and that way you are able to uh, sh share the your RPA journey and uh, implementation with your organization. So this is just a theoretical view that I gave. I, I, I would also like to uh, maybe show how Insight looks. Yeah. So um, just to add on what Arun explained. So Insight is you know, quite an important uh, you know, tool from a different uh, you know, roles uh, perspective as well. So for example, if we have the leads or managers uh, in the organizations, so they will go to the insights and they will see what is the return they are getting on the entire RPA implementation that is done in the entire organization. So how many processes you have, uh, what is the runtime, how much hours it has saved, and then how much uh, cost it has saved. So you can see you can see the goal, like how much money you wanted to save and how much money you have saved so far. So something like that, you can always uh, you know put the data and see the details. So that is from the leads point of view. Then from the uh, leader, uh, from the leads of the, let's say, COE or the, the technical leads or the other, uh, you know, leads uh, in the team, from their point of view, they can go and they can see the quality of automation, like how much time uh, a process is taking to complete a transaction or uh, in total, uh, how many robots are there? What is the utilization of those robots? What is the uh, success rate of the transactions? So they can review the quality of automations, efficiency of automation and performance of the automations. Apart from that, from the developer's point of view, you know, they can go and they can see, uh, let's say uh, from one process, you know, you are getting a lot of transactions into the system exceptions or the 
business exceptions or any other uh, you know failure is happening so then you have the input that okay i need to go back to this particular process i need to review what is happening uh, what is uh, you know going wrong with it and i can repair it i can modify it and then i can again uh, uh, you know share it with the i can publish it to the production run it let it run monitor so that is a entire closed loop cycle that is going on on the different level of uh, you know roles that that are there in the rpa yeah uh, arun you can go ahead thank you sagar okay yeah as uh, i was mentioning uh, and as sagar was also mentioning how you can measure so these are uh from the practical point of view how you can visualize this for this uh in ui path insights we have a lot of dashboards specific to different uh, data models that you can have for example we can have data model of processes jobs queues business rois so these are uh, the templates which we already have present other than that you can create your own customized user based dashboards uh, and visualize based on the different data models that we have but we already have uh, built in dashboards that you can also use so if for example if i just take an example of this processes da template dashboard uh, we can just quickly see the number of things that it can fetch and based on the number of jobs that are running in the orchestrator so since orchestrator is uh, uh, coupled with insight so the data that is flowing through the orchestrator is used to have a view on the insights so as you can see these this is one of the dashboards and there we have a lot of tiles here uh, it can tell you how many processes ran what has been the success success rate of those processes so you have a high level idea of how the automations are running in your organization and the uh, time it is saving uh based on that you can have your customized styles where you can see uh, where, you, where you can define the cost you are also able to uh save and you can have a historical uh bar graph view of your processes how they are running maybe top 10 processes you you can customize it to involve more more things faulted jobs what has been the weekly runs of different jobs that are running and which job is uh basically running for a longer time and which job is uh, running for a smaller time so based on that you can also have a view of which machine is you know uh, not having uh, much of the uh, work on at that particular time so you can schedule more of your robots and and yeah other than this you can have the error details so this is just a view that is a customized view this is not like a hard and fast thing that so you can customize it based on various rules that uh, you you have you can define your formulas you can define your dashboards you can define your tiles so the more you play with it the more value you, you will be able to draw out of it okay so this is about insights and uh, yeah i would want to also discuss uh, the uh, the different versions that we have had uh, throughout the years like uh, going from the 2020.10 version because uh, i was mentioning there has been uh, the platform level changes in insights as well so starting with our uh, 2020.10 uh, we used to have sisense as the background technology that uh, we used for the analytic capabilities and uh, data modeling and visualization and uh, uh, this required only windows one windows server to run the component which was the inside component and the sisense component that we used to install uh, as the uh, technology grew we moved from sisense to looker for uh, uh, for the analytical capabilities and uh, right now uh, looker is being used going forward as well from the current versions and uh, since 2021.10 so uh, as far as 2021.10 version of uipath insight is concerned um we used to run the linux container that was running looker on windows server itself and uh, so we only required one single windows server that was hosting the looker linux container and uh, uh, since there was only one machine and the looker container was uh, running on windows uh, 
due to the uh, microsoft not supporting the production environment uh, they, uh, uh, they they had this uh, thing removed so we moved to running the looker container on a specific linux box so now with versions 2020.4 to uh, the upcoming versions that we have let's say or oh, even 2023.4 the background technology is still looker but the looker linux container is now hosted on a separate linux box and uh, so we require one windows server which runs the inside component uh, the windows inside component and the linux box is specifically used to host the looker container so uh, this has been the different uh, uh, paths that uh, that have been the insights so we will see how if we have to go from one version to another what are the ways through which we can uh, move and uh, yeah we will also sh uh, demonstrate how we can move from 2022.4 to 2023.4 okay so uh, i also wanted to discuss that uh, you know uh, we were discussing about since this uh, session is about the upgrade but why we should upgrade what could be the reasons and consideration that you have to ensure why you you have to upgrade because it's very important to uh, be on the version which have the latest features so uh, if you are considering the upgrade in your uh, uh, organization for uipath insights what are the things that you can think of uh, there are lots of versions as we move uh, further there are older versions that go out of support so you should always refer the documentation on uipath insights uh, or uipath for all the products which are going out of support uh, for their life cycle so it's better to use the versions which are uh, recent and under the supported product life cycle so uh, we 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 have this link that you can follow and uh, check all the uh, supported versions that we have now what are the other things that you can that you should also keep in mind while you are upgrading there are various features also not just the the whole component there could be various features uh, let let's say that could be deprecating in the older versions uh, for example in in terms of uh, the new the version 2022.4 the inside data model there was the dimensions on queues uh, that we used to use in the queues uh, exports that is that will not be there so as we as you go to the newer version these you you'll have to ensure that these deprecations are taken care of and uh, in terms of uh, the removals also you have to see for example the versions 2019.10 these are the versions that will stop working in december 2023 so you will have to see which version you have to go with and uh, like 2023.4 being the latest version and 2022.10 being the n minus version which version you have to go with you so based on the documentation you will have to consider that we always uh, recommend to check the compati compatibility matrix to uh, for example uh, to, to see which version that you are running for insights or any product is compatible with the rest of the products that you are using uh, as far as insights is concerned then we have the insights uh, and orchestrator should always be running on the same versions so it's a uh, very important to check the compatibility matrix which is mentioned in this uh, documentation here which version you should be using this uh, this will list down the compatibility for the rest of the products as well so these are the things that you should always consider before you are going for the upgrade and uh, uh, how you should move it will depend on uh, which features you want to use and which uh, product is in the supported product life cycle all right okay so before uh, we move uh, forward with the upgrade and the live demonstration of it what are the things that uh, you should make sure are in place before you are uh, considering the upgrade what are the prerequisites that has to be met and uh, 
uh, what are the hardware and software requirement that you have to ensure uh, before any upgrade, be it just insights or anything, it's very important that we come up with an upgrade plan and document that procedure where we list down the timings that it is going to take to upgrade and what is the flow of the upgrade that we are going to follow. Uh, maybe first we will be doing an upgrade for one environment and then for the another environment. So these are the things and who will be the stakeholders and who will be the key people will be involved in this process and what will be our plan. And in the same way, you should, you should always have a rollback plan. You should always back up your environment, be it the configuration files, be it the database that you are going to use, be it uh, the dashboards, for, for example, if we are using Insight. So everything, you should have a backup of everything uh, before going for an upgrade. Now, as far as Insights and Orchestrator are concerned, I like I mentioned, it's a uh, very important, uh, uh, it's actually a requirement to run orchestrator and insights on the same version. Uh, certificate details, uh, because there are multiple uh, machines which are, uh, which will be communicating. So for the seamless communication, we should, we need to ensure that the certificate that are being used are having, uh, uh, are, are able to ensure a seamless communication between the machines. Now, uh, as far as the hardware and software requirements are concerned, we should, uh, when it comes to 2023.4 version, here is the documentation that we can ensure we should follow. So in 2023.4 version, uh, as I mentioned that uh, there are now two machines that are running, uh, one machine is running the insight component and another machine is running the Looker Linux container. So as far as the hardware requirements are concerned, we need two servers. One will be Insights Windows machine. And uh, this is the minimum requirement that you need to have uh, to run this. And uh, since Windows or the orchestrator is also installed on Windows machine, you cannot co-host it with the same uh, machine. You need to have Insights component installed on a separate Windows machine. And in short, this is the requirement. And always refer our documentation for any prerequisites uh, or requirements that you have to follow because uh, everything is remains up to date on our documentation. For Linux machine, <clears throat> these, this is the requirement that we have to follow, the minimum requirements. Uh, now there can be, uh, uh, there can be environments which are air gapped. So you have to ensure that these two directories, the home directory should have at least four GB space and the wire directory is having at least 10 GB space. And uh, this is the minimum requirement of the machines based on the pro number of uh, rows and processes that you are running. These keep this. This will. Uh, this this might have to increase. Uh, and this is just a minimum requirement. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be a communication happening, uh, and we need to ensure that these ports are specifically opened for the uh, for the communication between the machines and the components 443 is ensured to to be opened on uh, for, for uh, insights windows machine where the insights component is installed double nine double nine is the looker port and since it's a looker port it has to be enabled on insights linux machine one double nine one double nine port is a Looker API port that has to be enabled on Linux machine. 299-299 is look ML port, which has to be enabled on inside Linux machine. So these are the port requirements. Now coming to the SQL requirements, uh, since uh, we, we installed the inside database and the, all the configurations of dashboards and all the explores and all the data that is flowing is, uh, uh, is, is basically flowing through the orchestrator and through the insights database. This is, uh, this you should consider based on the amount of data and the roles that you have, which, which, uh, configuration you would like to go with. Like if you have a small scale, this is 
a minimum requirement and for large scale this is uh, this is the minimum requirement that you have to go with uh, if you are having a small scale uh, uh, deployment you can have the sql database and uh, the insight database on the same machine but if this is a large scale deployment it's uh, it, it's recommended that it is running on a separate machine this was about the hardware requirement now if we talk about the software requirements uh, since there are two operating systems uh, uh, servers that we are using windows machines are supported to have 2019 version and uh, red hat linux mach machine box can have 8.2 to 8.7 or 9.0 version for database the sql machine should be running to 2019 version as the supported version of it in terms of web servers we should have ias running 10 plus versions once you have ias it's uh, the requirement is to also install the dotnet hosting bundle which should be 6.0 plus security protocol as far as tls is concerned should be 1.2 and 1.3 and these are the web browsers which are supported to run the linux uh, sorry insights so this this is what we talked about the insights um what do we say uh, insights hardware and software requirements now coming to the different paths that we talked about uh, because uh, you may be coming from a version which uh, could be 2020.10 or 2021.4 or 2021.10 so based on which version you are there are various uh, upgrade or migration paths uh, if i should say uh, that are present for us so those we will discuss how we can achieve that so this is again our documentation that talks about different paths that we have for upgrade depending on which version you are coming from this uh, like i already explained okay now let's say what our scenarios uh, is that we are coming from a version which is 2021.4 or a version prior to that uh, in the beginning i i mentioned that these are the versions which used uh, sisense as the analytical technology being used and post 2021.10 uh, we had started look, using looker for the same so there is no direct upgrade path when it comes to the version 2021.4 to 23.4 how this can be achieved is we we install a newer version of uh, install uh, insights 2023.4 on a separate machine and keep the old version uh, at the same place at the same time and uh, before you do that you can migrate your users for migrating the users we have a tool which is user migration tool that we can make use of and uh, uh, once that is done and you have installed the newer version of insights 23.4 and you have uh, pointed it to the the same database that you were using it will stop the ingestion of the old data and uh, uh, the new data uh, to the new insights will be configured uh, here since you are moving from 2021.4 and prior versions you will have to create your own new custom dashboards based on your older uh, versions that you have configured uh, and the formulas and once you have everything configured in place you can uninstall the older version and uh, just uh, get started with the newer one so this is in case you are moving from 2021.4 and prior version to 2023.4 um, now if we talk about 2021.10 to 2023.4 version 2021.10 uh, used looker but it uh, the looker was hosted on windows machine um, as a container so since looker has has always uh, is already there on the newer version as well 
So there is not a direct upgrade to the 2023.4 version, but we have a migration procedure through which you can move your dashboards and volumes to the newer version. Um, so how does this can be achieved is, first in the same way, we have a user migration tool that you can use to migrate all the user to the newer version. Uh, once you have achieved that, there is a Looker pre-installation tool for exporting the Looker volumes and the, the dashboards. So this script we can run and uh, keep the exported Looker data. Uh, and this we can use while we are installing the newer version of Insights. So uh, this way we are able to migrate our dashboards, which we were not able to do in the prior version if, if we are moving from 2021.4 to 23.4 but 21.10 we can migrate the dashboards and the looker volumes as well now once you have uh, exported the uh, migrated data you will install the newer version of insights 2023.4 and uh, uh, use the same exported data that you have gotten from uh, uh, looker pre-installation script and that you can use uh, while installation of the newer version. And this will ensure that there is a migration from your older version to a newer version of 2023.4. And yeah, once you have everything migrated and completed, you can uninstall the, the older version of 2021.10. Okay, let's talk about the uh, upgrade that we are also going to demonstrate today from 2022.4 to 2023.4. Uh, after 2022.4, we have uh, Looker running on li separate Linux container and uh, inside component on Windows. So from 2022.4 to 23.4, the upgrade process is available. And this is a, uh, uh, there is a direct upgrade that uh, we can perform. And uh, all we have to do is we have to, uh, we, we have to have the orchestrator URL that we are using. There is an installation token that uh, uh, that we can get from the orchestrator host um, that we can use. And we can mention the uh, a Linux uh, box that we are using for on 2022.4. And this way we will be able to upgrade the installation. So there is a direct upgrade available. And uh, this we will be going to demonstrate now. So, uh, so I will hand this over to Sagar, who will be demonstrating this, how this install the upgrade of uh, 2022.4 to 2023.4 is done. All right, yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Arun, for all the information, all the. Uh, theoretical part that you covered. Uh, I hope that uh, all of our, um, you know, joiners have understood, you know, how we have evolved from the uh, previous versions of the insights and how we have uh, reached the current uh, version, what all components are there, and then, uh, you know, the upgrade scenarios and prerequisites as well. I'm sharing my screen. Let me know once it is visible uh, to every one of you. <clears throat> yeah, it's visible. Yeah. So um, as uh, Arun mentioned, you know, the very first and the very important uh, consideration when you upgrade insights is that your orchestrator version and insights version should remain same. Right. So let's say you are on 22.4 or 22.10 in the orchestrator, but you want to upgrade to 23.4 in the insights. So for that, first of all, you have to upgrade your orchestrator as well. Once you upgrade your orchestrator and, uh, you know, if the feature is not enabled, then you enable the feature as well. Then the next stage is to upgrade inside. So the very first stage is to upgrade orchestrator. Uh, how that our orchestrator upgrade is done, it's, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, you just uh, run directly via orchestrator.msi on the orchestrator server node, depending on uh, which type of installation it is, either a single node or multi node, it will uh, differ a little bit. But for the single node, you just run uh, the orchestrator MSI, you upgrade the orchestrator version, and then you go ahead to upgrade the insights. 
So here there are some instructions uh, we have mentioned, such as uh, you can run directly via the orchestrator MSI, first of all. Second is uh, before running it, we need to make sure that insights feature is also, um, we need to make sure that insight feature is already selected during the upgrade and all the prerequisites are made. So I already have, um, you know, orchestrator server ready with me. And this is the existing or the uh, current orchestrator that we have, okay? Uh, if you see over here, my current orchestrator version is 22.4.8, but we want to upgrade insights to 23.4. That's why we have to upgrade this version as well, okay? To upgrade orchestrator, again, a straightforward uh, process uh, that we are going to show you is we have the orchestrator MSI over here, and we are going to run it. You can run it with the multiple, uh, you know, methods. You can run it through the elevated PowerShell, or there are multiple other ways as well. So, yeah, we'll we'll upgrade the orchestrator first. Meanwhile, uh, you all can post your questions, queries on this Slido. Uh, we will just begin the installation over here or upgrade over here, and then we will move to the quiz part, which is uh, going to be even uh, more exciting for you all. So let's wait till um, the upgrade. So if you see, the version is 23.4.1. So it is taking a while. Uh, Slido link. Um, Arun, can you share the Slido link in the chat, Zoom chat? Mm, okay. I think some people have joined later, so maybe they might not have the access. Okay, yeah, let me see, how can I share it? Uh, you can go to slido.com. Uh, yeah, I have shared the image of Slido. Yeah, perfect. Yeah so, yeah. yeah. so you can scan this QR code on, on your device's phone or uh, on the phone, or you can go to slido.com and enter this number over there, a, a quiz number, and you will be redirected to the quiz. At the same time, you have options to uh, raise queries and questions also. You can do that as well. I think we have a couple of questions, Arun, if you want to take that up. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'm okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this is taking a while, uh, you know, to uh, get the space requirements and everything, all the background stuff, it is happening. Uh, let's give it a minute and then we can continue. Meanwhile, anyone have any questions, you can uh, post it in the Slido. Hello, hi Sagar. Can I can I ask my question? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, Sagar. So to get this insights option, first of all, we need to upgrade to uh, twenty three point four point one. Is it? Is it required? No, no. It is available in the orchestrator. It is just that uh, when you install orchestrator or when you upgrade orchestrator, there is this insights feature that yeah. you need to enable. That is the only requirement. But it okay. is not necessary that you need in you need twenty three dot four. It's not necessary. Okay, very clear. And one more thing. Last time when we were uh, uh, okay, one year back we installed Orchestrator. That time itself we tried to configure insights, insights and test automation. Mm -hmm. In that time we faced the challenge of this uh, SQL Server. Some some special feature need to be there. That's the reason we couldn't uh, install it. We installed only Orchestrator. So if we reinstall with the latest version, I think some specific uh, database requirement is uh, required for insights, is it? Yeah, um, in the software prerequisites uh, and the hardware prerequisites, you will get the entire information. So basically we need, depending on the version of insights, it, it uh, you know, the version of SQL server is different. So if you want to go ahead with the 22 dot, uh, let's say 10, uh, you will need SQL Server 2019 and above. You will need Windows Server uh, 2019 and all. So this kind of requirement is there, which you need to fulfill. So okay, got see, it. Sir. If you see on my screen, 
okay. while upgrading there there is a possibility that you do not have insights previously but now you want to install the insights so you can go ahead and you can enable this option over here insights integration now when we installed 22.4 we already enabled the insights that's why when we are upgrading it is already enabled mm -hmm. or otherwise you can enable it at this moment also that both the uh, you know uh, scenarios are fine and then i just have to click next and install so this is the first stage as in we are upgrading the orchestrator all right so till the time this is happening i will stop uh, sharing this screen and uh, we'll again uh, go through this slido quiz uh, you all have i think already uh, scanned the qrs if not uh, the link is in the chat or uh, sagar you can share your screen to have the slide just show the okay. slido link fine yeah so we are having uh, exciting questions or knowledge check over there we want to see how much you have paid attention to the to the session so you can uh, scan this one so once you scan it let me do it along with you all so you can just open the camera or google lens if you have just scan it it will redirect you to one page okay once you go over there you need to go to you need to go to one second let's start the quiz okay so you need to go to polls and you will find a quiz option over there i hope everyone is able to find it perfect yeah, i see, I see people, people joining there. Yeah. yep great yeah yeah and make sure you have a right name okay so yeah let's okay. join uh, let's all join i see eight people have joined yeah so we have around uh, 30 participants so let's see if we can get all of you here it's going to be fun so please join and uh, meanwhile let's also check where we have reached okay so the orchestrator is getting upgraded i see 10 people have joined yeah let's wait for a few more seconds uh, if we do not have more people joining then we can start the quiz yeah okay 11. guys winner of this quiz will have a surprise at the end so if you want to be the winner, you can join. Yeah, Sagar, will you also be sharing the screen with the questions or? Sorry? Uh, will you also be sharing the Slido da dashboard like with the question? Um, so you can see the winners here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll show that as well. Wait. Uh, okay. Just give me a second. I hope that uh, my screen is visible to you all. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, we already have a first question over there. How many of you were able to answer it? Uh, 
Are you able to see the question? Uh, guys, guys, yeah. Answer... guys feel, feel free to unmute yourself if you are struggling and yeah, yeah. speak up. Uh, it showed up after uh, the poll was ended. Okay. So I am going to unlock voting again. And now you have time again to answer. There are 10 seconds. So guys, please be fast. Please be fast. Okay. Okay. 12 people have 13 people have done it still three people have left um i'll do it one more time one last time before we move ahead i'll unlock voting one more time okay let's get it done quickly so where is the docker hosted in uipath insights 21.10 so the answer is in let's see the correct answer the answer is windows server and uh, let's see the leaderboard leaderboard is having sm on the top who have uh, given answer in four seconds followed by praharsha chetan pedro and kamla okay are you Guys, all for the next question uh, we'll not be repeating it so yeah, yeah make sure that you are answering it in 10 seconds yeah so are you all ready for the next question yeah yeah everyone ready let's go ahead three two one go orchestrator and insights can be on different version true false who cares oops sorry so is it true or false or who cares everyone cares everyone cares, <laughs> everyone cares <laughs> but some are not <laughs> careful enough <laughs> yeah to pay attention pay attention uh, can yeah. orchestrator and insights be on a different versions no mm -hmm. not possible you need to be on the same version okay let's see uh let's see the chat oh chetan. the leaderboard so chetan is on the top now uh, followed by pedro no much not much difference in between these two followed by kamla and Siri and Avinash. Okay, let's go ahead for the next question. I hope, I hope you all are ready. So here is your next question. Three, two, one, go. Can we do in place upgrade from 21.10 to 23.4? There is no option of who cares because you must care about this. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do in place upgrade? Well, mm. yeah. So let's see the right answer. Can we, we cannot. do? We cannot do the in-place upgrade because they both have a separate, um, you know, architecture. Basically, uh, twenty-one dot ten is having a Windows server with the Docker inside it, but twenty-three dot four have the Windows and the Linux server separately. So we cannot do in-place upgrade. We have to do a fresh installation and then migrate uh, the users. So let's see. 31% uh, have given the right answers. Okay. So leaderboard is shuffling quite rapidly. So we have Pedro, then Sri, Kamla, Avinash, and Chetan. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go for the next one. I hope you all are ready. So three, two, one. Here you go. So while enabling insights, how is the data from orchestrator flow into inside database? So how that data gets into inside database? So how does that happen? Let's see the right answer. And the right answer is automatic backfill. So you don't have to uh, you know pass the data manually or you don't have to use any tool basically. Whenever you install insights uh, and you give access to a particular tenant or the user, that data is automatically uh, filled into the new insights DB and that is automatically shown into the uh, dashboards. So the answer is automatic backfill. We cannot do it manually. We cannot use a DB migration tool. Uh, it's not, there is no tool as such over there. It was to bluff you. So the answer is automatic backfill. 
So let's see who have given the right answer. So Avina Sharma have given the right answer and uh, is on the top. So final question again, uh, be careful while answering. This can decide the winner, okay? So let's go ahead, final question. Uh, three, two, one, here we go. So while upgrading from UiPath Insights version 21.10 and below, how are the users migrated? So magic wand or uh, looker pre-installation, user migration, people migration. Wow. So a lot of people have given the good attention to this part. So good. So yeah, the answer is user migration tool. Uh, that's how the users are migrated. And let's see. Let's see the leaderboard. So the winner is Avinash Sharma. Congratulations, Avinash. Now let's uh, go back and let's see where we are with respect to oh, orchestrator upgrade. So we are almost there. Okay, any questions? Till this is happening. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, you can unmute and ask the questions. <clears throat> um, also, if you have asked any questions um, uh, uh, which are not answered yet, feel free to ask around that too. That's also fine. Uh, yeah, I have one question. This is Kamla. Mm -hmm. If user migration is happening through you, uh, user migration tool, then remaining data, jobs, queues, logs, everything will be used some other uh, tool. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes, you are audible. So that that data is uh, whenever you uh, install insights, okay. Uh, for example, you go from 21.10 to 23.4 or you go to 22.10. So you do the fresh installation, right? Uh, it's not in place upgrade. So when you do in uh, uh, fresh installation and when you give a particular tenant as an access to insights, so the data automatically backfills to the insights database. So you don't have to use any separate tool or you don't have to do it manually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or orchestrator is still upgrading. All right. Any any other question? So inserts no need separate license, right? It's come with orchestrator, right? No, it, it needs a separate license. Yeah. Oh, separate license. Yes, it needs a separate license. Yeah. But uh, orchestrator, uh, we have a. Uh, uh, there is a three types of orchestrator, right? Basic and uh, other levels of orchestrator. So any type of orchestrator need to uh, purchase a separate license for insights, is it? So yeah, basically right. it needs a separate license, but uh, you can contact the UiPath <clears throat> support team to get more information on which type of orchestrator is uh, uh, you know, compatible with the what license type. Okay, got it. Thank yeah. you. So when you upgrade from one version to another version in the orchestrator, uh, multiple things are happening, uh, such as even uh, the database which Insights is using, that database is also getting uh, some uh, changes into it. And that's why we need to upgrade uh, the orchestrator as well. So both the databases, uh, orchestrator database and Insights database, they both are uh, interlinked and then the schemas are also linked so that uh, that's the reason why upgrade is absolutely necessary so the database schema change the uh, a bit of structure change so all these things happen so uh, post this we are going to have the uh, insights upgrade uh, currently, the version that we have on the insights, let me just quickly show you the version as well. 
on the inside. So this is uh, the insights that we have on the Windows server. Um, and, and this is our orchestrator here. Uh, if we see here in the control panel, UiPath Insights is now 22.4.7. And uh, we are going to upgrade that to 23.4.1. Now coming back to the insight itself, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you have a default templates over here. Then you can create your own dashboards as well uh, with the option of create new dashboards. Uh, you have a tenant specific uh, dashboards as well. So let's say you want to limit the dashboard to particular tenant, you have that options. And then uh, from here, you can manage accesses and everything. For the business uh, stakeholders, you have option to configure ROI data set uh, basically. So this ROI data set is nothing but, uh, you know, wherein you can see the goal that you wanted to achieve, how many hours you wanted to achieve and how many you have achieved so far. What is the cost that you wanted to achieve and what is the cost that you have achieved so far? Uh, so all of these configurations you can do from over here. So that is, you know, um, as of now, uh, you know, a pretty straightforward use of it. When you go to each and every uh, dashboards, under those dashboards, you have multiple options. Uh, you can copy this existing dashboards or uh, templates as a my dashboard because these are non-editable ones you cannot edit them you cannot change anything into this if you want to make any change you need to go back uh, copy this to your dashboards and do the change so that's how you can use this this uh, pre uh, you know built uh, templates you can make the changes whatever you need and then um, you know it will be ready for you to use so this uh, orchestrator upgrade is completed We'll click on the finish, uh, and then let's let's refresh the orchestrator. <clears throat> it will take. Uh, okay, so now you can see that orchestrator version is twenty three dot four dot one. So that was the first stage in the. Um, in the insights upgrade uh, process. Now, let's get back to the insights server itself. So this is my insight server. So if I am going to access this now, see, I have processes, queues and templates and the version is 22.4.7, okay. If I, uh, let me refresh the orchestrator as well again. And now we are going to upgrade inside. So again, uh, simple as simple as that. Let me quickly go back to the deck. And uh, this is the orchestrator upgrade we have done. We have seen that demo and then the insights upgrade. So what we need to make sure, again, um, we need one installation token from the orchestrator. So we are going to have that. And then we need to make sure all the prerequisites are made. And then uh, we will upgrade it through the UiPath Insights.msi. That's it. So let's go ahead and see the upgrade. Uh, we'll just run the MSI, Insights Installer MSI. So this takes a while, uh, you know, till it does all the computation and everything. And then, you know, it's a simple, uh, you know, a couple of steps process to upgrade. Um, the entire installation, if you want to see, like from, if you want to see the entire installation of 22 dot, I think four or 10 it is. So we have, uh, we have already uh, done a session on that. So uh, Rohit, if may you want to share that link with everyone. Yes, sure, I'll do that. Yeah, so we have to add an orchestrator URL over here. Uh, so this is my orchestrator. I will just add that URL here. And as it was there in the requirement, we have to add an installation token. So what I will do, I will just uh, refresh this one. I will log in as a host.
Mm, okay, let me get it from the other uh, orchestrator server itself. One second. Uh, Arun, we have one question on the chat, I think. Yeah, I'm just checking on that. Yeah. Guys, you can unmute yourself and ask the question because uh, we are uh, performing upgrades, so we do not have a, one second. We don't have a deck to share. So you can unmute. We can have the interactive session over here. Is the installation token? This is Kamala. Uh, this mm -hmm. installation token we used to receive uh, as part of license. Huh? No, no, we have to generate it. So I'll just show you how that is done. Uh, let me just quickly show you that. Give me a second. So <clears throat> this is my orchestrator server, right? Where I upgraded in uh, just a while back. So I logged in as a host. So this is my host page. Okay. When I log in as a host, uh, let me do that again for you. So I will log in as a host over here. Once I log in as a host, I need to go back to management. And from the management, I will go to security. And here I have the installation key. So that is nothing but your installation token. So you just need to copy it from here yeah. and then you okay. can add it. You can add it in the, uh, in the upgrade window. That's it. So that, and that is valid for, uh, uh two hours, I think only. So you will have to generate a new one, uh, um, it's it's a good practice that before you add a token over here, just click on generate new. It will create a new uh, token for you from here. Let me take you back. Okay, so you just need to click on generate new. So it will create a new token and then from there you can add it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the upgrade is happening over here. All right. Um, any more questions, guys? Since it is a generate new, then we can generate many installation keys, right? Sorry? It won't be static. Pardon? The installation key won't be static, right? If it allows us to generate new every time. Yes, yeah, yes yeah. you'll have to generate new every time because this is valid for oh. two hours. So anytime we are installing a product that requires a uh, installation key, you have to go to orchestrator and generate a new key. Okay, later yeah. in the path, will it require to generate or one-time generation itself would be fine? This is one-time generation uh, only. While you're upgrading it, that will be just one time you require for uh, validating orchestrator with insights. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you generate it, you use it, and then whenever you need it next time, at that time only you generate it and use it. So you in between you don't have to pass that key anywhere else. Okay. Any any other questions? So in the entire process of upgrade, uh, you can see that we have done the uh, upgrade on the orchestrator side, and now we are doing upgrade on the inside side. So these two components are important. And uh, this is, um, uh, for example, 22.4 or 22.10. From that to 23.4, it's in place upgrade. Why it is in place upgrade? Because the architecture is same, the components are same. So for example, in the 22.4 and 22.10, we have a 
um, Windows server and the Linux machine. So similarly in 23.4 also we have the Linux server and a Windows machine. So you don't need a fresh installation over there. So let me finish it. Let me go back. Uh, one second. Let me open it. Control panel. So you see the version is now 23.4.1. So we have upgraded the version successfully. And let me do the IIS reset over here so that uh, we'll be ready to use it. That's done. And I go and I click on browse. So it will take a while to load. Okay, dashboard deletion file, please try again later. Okay, so that's the uh, entire upgrade uh, scenario um, from 22.4 to 23.4. Uh, I will check this one. Meanwhile, uh, we can take questions. Uh, Arun. Yeah, I have answered all of them on Slido. If you have any more questions, please feel free. Let me share my screen again. Yeah, so that is done. And uh, then we have the uh, post valid uh, post uh, uh, validation checks as in after the upgrade is done, what all things you need to check. First is you need to check the orchestrator version that we have already checked. We need to check the insights version that we have already checked. You need to check all the uh, users and uh, the roles, whether they have access or not. And you need to check the dashboards since we have done the in-place upgrade. So I'm just checking on uh, the dashboard sites. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Arun, you can share your screen and you can go ahead from there for any questions. Uh, yeah, can you share I your do, screen? I do not have any questions on the Slido. I have answered all of them. Perfect. Uh, let me go back. All right, I think uh, Rohit, we can then uh, conclude uh, because we have completed the upgrade yeah. scenarios and uh, we have shown how the upgrade is done. And we do not have any more questions. So yeah, we can go ahead. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you all. Um, thank you, uh, Sagar. Thank you, Arun, for um, leading this session. Um, meanwhile, any questions that uh, pop up, please do reach out to uh, community at uipart.com or you, I might have already noted down Sagar and Arun's uh, profile, so you can also reach out to them. Uh, the session, as uh, you must have seen in thread, is uh, something that will happen every week. Um, there is a question on share the profile. So Sagar, Arun, can you like send your, uh, or just write your email IDs or LinkedIn profiles or something uh, over here? Uh, yeah. 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 Or Arun, can you share the QR codes? The... Yeah, or that slide would be. Yeah, or that slide enough. itself. Yeah. Sure. 